playing away and all stuff like that. So there are things that I won't want to talk about and things that we want to talk about. So I'm going to be sending you down there to just, you know, brief them, as in saying what I can and can't talk about. Okay. But that's all I really wanted to say to you, just sort of to welcome you on board and to let you know that you have got, you know, stuff to deal with. Yeah. Um, and that's it for me. I'll look forward to seeing you at the radio station a little bit later on. OK. Right. Thanks, Jude. Mm -hmm. See you later. See you later. Rebecca sets off for her first real assignment as Jade's PA. But this isn't her first experience of dealing with unwanted press attention. During the paparazzi challenge, the PAs were forced to fend off a mob of photographers and journalists. And while others lost the plot and didn't impress the judges, this is all going tits up. Technical term. Jade was happy with Rebecca's proactive approach. When they did get in the doors, you grabbed me out of the room straight away when I started to get upset, put me in the toilet and made me stay in there. He was comforting and soothing. I was quite feisty. I was like, no, you're not taking photos of Jade. And you know, I was, um, I was quite pleased um, with my performance. The interviews are taking place at a national news broadcaster in the heart of London. With Jade's words still ringing in her ears, Rebecca arrives and heads straight to a meeting with presenter Naomi Whedon to lay down the ground rules. There's a couple of things that Jade you know, doesn't really want to cover. She's um, currently working on a project at the minute. She doesn't want to be asked about any um, a weight or exercise or anything like that. And then also um, to do with the press um, and everything that's happened this weekend with her relationship with Jack. She doesn't want anything to do with that neither. You know, it's not kind of about her personal life. This is just going to be about the show. Just kind of keep it, you know, quite general. Um, and like what she's looking for, what her ideal quality is. Exactly, yeah, what she's going to want people to do. Um, and, you know, how she sees, you know, the show being and what she hopes And why she needs a PA in the first place. Yeah, definitely. OK, well, thank you very much for that. I'm going to go and brief Jay quickly on, um, you know, what you can expect from the interview. And uh, we'll meet you in there. Jade arrives, and there's only a short time for Rebecca to fill her in on what to expect. So there's going to be, like, general questions, um, you know, why do you need a PA? Yeah. During the Thinking for Jade challenge, the PAs were asked to brief Jade for an interview with notorious radio presenter Nick Ferrari. Jade was to be quizzed on the big news stories of the day, but things started ominously when she turned up at the studio in her pajamas. <laughs> and with just five minutes each to get so much information across, none of the PAs fared well. Um, never been fed so much information in my life. What's the background to the fight between Blair and Brown, Jade? Gordon is agreeing with him that he should leave. Gordon is... who? Ramsey. What, what is Al-Qaeda? The bad man. The bad man? The bad terrorist person. Well, his name is Al, is it? People what does CCTV do. mean? Um, it's... Crime catching... <laughs> do you think... Crime this... catching television. Nick Ferrari was not impressed with Rebecca's efforts. Somebody should have told her what it was all about and they didn't cover the basics. But Jade liked her simple approach to getting the information across. I loved the way that Becky um, briefed me when we was doing the challenge where I had to go into a radio and do stuff like that. Although people said she didn't brief me that well, I personally think she did because I come out and I felt comfortable talking about that story. With Rebecca's briefing complete, Jade's first interview begins. So you're trying to choose yourself a PA. I imagine this is like to declutter your life and, and sort things out. Why do you think you need one in the first place? Because you seem, you know, pretty organised, like you've kept it together for quite a while, haven't you? I keep it together as in me and my family. Yeah, I'm a strong believer in... After an emotional reunion, Jade turns her thoughts to tomorrow. Hi Becky, thanks for everything tonight. Um, what time I get here tomorrow? Um, 11.15 in the morning, I've checked, and that's all fine. It's picking up at your house, yeah. and your country's waiting there now, so whenever Thank you're you. ready. I'll leave now. Give me a call in the morning. I will do. Tomorrow. The job's done for Rebecca, and she's happy with her evening's work. Well, I think Jade was, you know, quite happy with uh, my performance tonight. She just said, thanks for everything, and, you know, um, I just hope that I've, that I've been of, you know, some help, and she's felt that, you know, I, I was there, you know, to support her. Rebecca's on her way to see top designers Ellie and Charlotte, who've created her a business suit to make sure she looks glamorous in her new job. I think it's uh, really important to uh, look the part. Obviously, um, Jade wants someone who is um, going to, you know, represent her at all times. So, um, you know, this is 
you know, the perfect suit for that, really. It's the moment of truth as Rebecca steps out in her very own PA outfit. Wow. <laughs> Looks fantastic. Amazing, Looks it? beautiful. You please? Oh, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, Celebrity assistants and have invited Rebecca for a chat to offer her some advice and a few words of warning. It's a golden opportunity to find out more about her new profession. The world of Jade that she's working for will be different every day and she won't know what's going to happen. I think she's had a very good background. I think what she's learned and also what she might pick up tonight will put her in good stead for the job. I think Becky could be very surprised by what the job will entail, probably on a daily basis. Being new to the world of the celebrity PA, Rebecca is keen to gather valuable insight from these experienced professionals. The potential pitfalls of being a celebrity PA are that you can find the job really draining and that it does take up a lot of your, your energy, really, because so, you, you really do have to put your heart and soul into it. It is going to be like, you know, 24 hours, 7 days, and um, I just wonder when kind of a crossover between, you know, my life and, and, then, and then working for Jade, you know, how, how, do you, how do you sort that out? I think in the beginning you'll find it all-encompassing. There'll be a lot to learn and a lot going on, but it is important to find that time to separate your life from Jade's life. It will evolve sort of naturally. Mm. I mean, once you have a working relationship with Jade and you both know where you're coming from, yeah. and she'll understand, but you've got to have time off and do mm. your thing as well. Is there anything that you can tell me that I need to do at the very beginning so that everything else will, you know, kind of fall into place? Is there anything that I need to just set up straight away? I would try to introduce yourself to all of Jade's contacts, her stylist, her hairdresser, her agent, and build up a database of the information that you'll need on a regular basis. Um, you know, there was a couple of comments that I am a bit of a party girl, and how do I establish, you know, the way a working relationship, and then, and then kind of, a, you know, a, you know, a friendship maybe. Um, you know, where, you know, where does that, where does that cross over lie? I think, you know, you have to have a life, simple as that, and it's very important because if you don't have a life, then you're not going to be any good. You don't want to be swinging from the chandeliers and being that Miss Party Girl in her presence, really. It is a working relationship. Yeah. She is your boss and you do want to keep it professional. Yeah, definitely. During the discretion challenge, the PAs went out drinking on what they thought was a night off, but in reality they were secretly being filmed. The next day, Rebecca was reprimanded for her lack of discretion. You were talking on the phone quite loudly about Jade. Now I'd had, you know, probably a little bit too much to drink and I just thought, oh no, you know, I just didn't realise what I, you know, I couldn't remember what I, what I said and so it was just, oh yeah, it was awful but, you know, a really good lesson. Is there anything that um, you've been asked to do and you just thought, oh, I'm not doing that? I, I won't do anything that's illegal. Yeah. Anymore. <laughs> now, I think Jade is probably a fine example of somebody who would understand if a request is unreasonable. Jade, uh, you know, is in the spotlight a lot of the time and, um, you know, her career has been based, um, you know, she's, she's very much in the media all the time and um, I just wondered if you've got any, any tips on how to handle that and, you know, when, when's the right time to you know, become, you know, let her get on with it or, you know, the right time to step in. That is a, a, a thing you need to discuss with Jade in terms of how she wants to deal with that. But from your point of view, professionally, you know, you keep your head right down. You mm -hmm. don't talk to people about, you know, what Jade's up to or even, you know, who you work with sometimes. Just want to say thank you so much for, you know, coming to meet me tonight. You've answered a lot of my questions and I feel, um, I feel a lot better about everything, actually. So, thank you so much. Pleasure. Yeah. And good luck with everything. Do keep in touch. Thank you, I will do. Just come out the meeting with David and Annabelle and it was really, really good. It was um, just a nice chat, really. Um, I'm going to go and buy a pair of shoes for Jade. I think she's going to a party of some sort. Getting to know Jade's taste is a key part of the job and Rebecca knows how important it is to get it right first time. Well, Jade's not going to wear something like that. How bad are they? I mean, obviously, uh, I want to make sure I get... I get it right because, um, you know, when I'm thinking back to the star challenge, uh, I mean, I was on the winning team, but I saw how she was with, you know, with the other team. She didn't like what they picked for her. So a little bit of pressure there. I cannot believe, you know, you're all half decent dressers. You've all got stings, but yet you turn me out like this. You look like yeah. a whore. I look like a dog. 
Can I have those? Both of those and a size six, please. Six, seven. If I pick out something for Jade, and um, you know, obviously she's she's photographed in it and see it in a magazine, or she's wore it for an interview or something, I'm obviously going to feel, um, you know, quite pleased with myself and quite excited about that because, you know, it obviously means that she's got faith in what I've chosen. With her fingers crossed that Jade will like what she's bought, Rebecca calls it a day. The next morning, she has a meeting with Jade's mum, Jackie, who has a very definite agenda in mind. My concerns are quite strongly about the Chavis, uh, Jay's boys. The boys are precious to me, and she's got to, like, deal with them very careful because I'm their nanny. When Rebecca arrives, Jackie gets straight to the point. What are you like with children? I think I'm OK with children, but... Um, you know, with the, you know the, the challenge that I had with Bobby and Freddy, I literally had five minutes in the garden, and I think like I panicked because I was like, I didn't time. have anything, okay. and it was only five minutes. But then um, when I met them later on, I had more time with them, and you know, I was I was a bit more settled, and I was less nervous. What are you like for criticising? I mean, like if Jay just talks to you, it's like, well, how's that? What are you doing? Yeah. How are you going to respond? I mean, I am quite a strong character, and I think that, um, you know, if Jade was to just, like, you know, you know, kick off or, you know, shout or whatever, I wouldn't, I would never get upset. It wouldn't upset Good. me. You won't go in I the just... corner and cry? No. Wicked, because no. you've got the sack, mate, in a second. You can't be weak around Jade, you no, really I can't. Know. I see your personality gleam at, oh, and I told Jade that I liked you. I thought you was quite you. nice, but I didn't expect you to be picked. I said to Jade, why did you pick Rebecca? She went, like, why are you asking that, Mum? I said, well, because she seems too young yeah. to work for you. That's what I, I said to yeah. her, and she went, you know what, Mum? She said, she got Freddie's birthday just slung on her. And Jade said, you organised that professionally. You pulled it off, because otherwise Jade would have slaughtered you to me, but she didn't. She praised you. I'm very pleased to meet you, and I think you're going to pull through good. You know, even though you're going to work for her, become friends, because yeah. she's got a good sense of humour as well. Sure. I think her and Jade are going to get on very well, and I think the boys are going to love her too. They're going to laugh at her accent, in any case. Very well done, Jade, for picking Rebecca. To be honest, I thought it went really well. 